The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, the Money Masters. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, the Money Masters. Good day, Money Masters and Treasure Hunters. Welcome to the September 30th, terrific Tuesday edition of today's Money Masters show. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, the daily newsletter service that is the intelligence for creating financial freedom. Hope everyone out there is off to a great start of their day. Let's make sure that you and I, that we do all that we can do to have a terrific Tuesday. And I'll do all that I can during the next hour to help you with extraordinary tools that help us understand where price is headed to. Those are the A to B equals CD patterns. That's the uh, Fibonacci retracements and expansions. The combination of those make up our Gartley buy and sell patterns. Butterflies as well, in case you ever get butterflies in your stomachs out there. We got Japanese candlesticks. We're going to look at the hammer candle that was formed in the Dow. As you know, Steve Osan here believes that the market is just simply trying to form a bottom out here. I expect that all that work will be uh, complete over the course of the next uh, several days, meaning by Friday, perhaps sooner, yesterday's low may have been the number out there. We'll take a look at a number of charts just to try to get a feel for what's going on. So we got a market out here, and that's a beautiful thing. Not only do we have a market, we've got a great trading market. And congratulations to H. Yip. He's our first, he or she is our first place uh, leader. You know, the uh, virtual trading competition that we have here at TFNA, what a cool thing that Tom has uh, put together. You start off with $25,000 in your account, and uh, we've got uh, H. Yip has already made a profit of $25,000. How do you like them marbles out there? C. Norwood making 18, almost 19 grand out there. J. Skoronsky, 15,000. T. Holland, 12.7. How about R. Barnes, nine grand? A. Todd, 8,600. D. Cooper, up 7,500. D. Lojko, up 6,700. J. Yee, 65. And T. Johnson, 5,700. Of course, we have winners every day, five winners a day out there. So uh, 100 bucks, not too shabby out there. So make sure you place your trades inside the uh, market. Congratulations to all out there. Hey, let's never forget, the way we do anything is... The way we do everything. It is Terrific Tuesday. This is TFNN. I'm Steve Rhodes, and welcome to the show. Right now, we got the uh, Dow. She's trading off 33 points, trading out at 17,037. S&P off four, trading out at 1973. Composite off 12, trading at 4,492. Russell 2,000 down seven. But we're going to check in on the Dalai Lama out here. We're going to check out the uh, Dow. Why are we checking out the Dow? Because the Dow formed a hammer candle yesterday and that says that low is very important for us to watch out here maybe we see a test of it maybe we see a break of it i don't know what we're going to see i just know we want to pay attention to it. we must pay attention to it and that's the low of yesterday and that price point is 16934 but there's your hammer candle out there that is the uh, strongest one day reversal signal that you can see and as we like to say there's nothing more bearish than a failed bullish candle that is a, a signal out there we'll be watching those lows but you talk about trying to form a bottom you got that uh, you got that inside of the dow yesterday we got it inside of the dow jones we also got it inside of the trannies out there i believe let's go i think those are the only two hammer candles that i saw as i just simply was scanning the charts let's go take a look at the trannies right now they're off about a half percent down 48 uh, points out here this is a weekly chart let me change this to the uh, daily chart out here and let's go see yeah it too Form day hammer candle. So those are the two indexes that one should monitor out here. The low inside that hammer was at 83.92. You're trading 84.49. You break that hammer candle. If you're long, you're wrong. That just says that we'd see a move lower. Where would it move down to? Well, you like to try to find the next area of support. And inside of the trannies, unfortunately, that level of support is all the way down at its swing point out here back on August the 8th. But you'd also go ahead and take a look, in this case here, retracement levels. And if we take a look at the transports there, just slide the trade right into the .382 retracement. Uh, 82.47, if you see a break of that camera candle, would be a likely target uh, level. But first, 
things first, it would have to break that area. The transports and the Dow both signaling that the uh, bottom is being uh, formed out here. And it's going to be a doozy. It's going to be a good bottom. And we're going to have all kinds of divergences that are not going to confirm this, right? Because I can give you a list of, I was going to say 50, but I'm not going to over-exaggerate. But I could give you a list of probably five or six out there uh, that are not going to confirm it. But they'll catch up. They will catch up, and you're going to see a significant bottom, a significant low out there inside of the marketplace as we move out of this unseasonal cycle out here, which really hasn't done too much. In fact, it has done so little to the market. Let's go check out some of the monthly charts out here. Let me switch over to one of my other tools out here. Let's go take a look at the indexes on the monthly basis. Let's go start off by taking a look at, let's take a look at the Dow, since we talked about the Dow. In essence, let's go take a look at the Dow and let's go see what we've got out here. Now, if we take a look at the Dow, let me try to blow this up on my screen just a little bit for you. And if we take a look at the candle session that we've got going on in place right now, this is not a reversal signal. Hey, you could get a little doji candle, I suppose, if we see it close today here at about 17.097 or 17.050 uh, right now. Yeah, you could get a little bit of a doji candle. Uh, that does have meaning at resistance, but we're in newfound territory. That's not resistance. You're in newfound territory. It just means the market's a little bit tired out there. Um, and tired she should be. But is there a reversal signal inside the Dow? Absolutely not. On a monthly basis, absolutely not. This was the month here where the Dow could have actually given you one heck of reversal signal on a monthly basis, especially being in one of the weaker months of the year. Put that in perspective. September, traditionally, would be one of your weakest months out there. And what did it do? Well, at least I can tell you it's at 10, 13 a.m. on September 30th. It's done nada. Not a darn thing out here to give you any kind of feel that there's any kind of real reversal in the air. Is it moving higher on less relative strength? Oh, sure it is out there, but that alone is not a, uh, that's not a reversal. That can resolve itself over time out here, and I suspect that's what we're really going to see the Dow do. Where's the Dow going to head to? Look. It only made a 38% retracement uh, coming off of the lows from March of 2009 to the highs that were put in here in May of 2011. And then the retracement was down here on October of 2011. Only a 0 .382 retracement out there, 38.6 to be exact. As we take a look at this, what does that say? It says the uh, Dalai Lama wants to trade up to 18,553 out there. And until I see some kind of reversal signal that says otherwise, that is where the Dow is headed to. So it has done nothing inside its monthly chart. What do we know about the weekly charts? The weekly charts, they are in a strong second wave up. In the uh, weekly chart for the uh, Dow, that says uh, that's a confirmation that the Dow actually wants higher price out there. And that's just looking at the charts and just getting rid of any kind of other clutter that is in the uh, mind out here and just paying attention to the charts and just turning off the uh, news. Now, in fact, let's go take a look at the weekly chart. I was talking about the weekly chart. I might as well at least put a weekly chart up here on the uh, screen for us. Let's go see what do we have. Any kind of reversal out here? And the answer, Johnny, is no, we do not. In fact, the uh, Dow had the potential of uh, price relative strength divergent patterns out here, but it just simply has been able to blow through those levels out here. So that's not even a pattern that is in play inside of the uh, Dow. Uh, what's the Dow done on a weekly basis here? You know, it's really done nothing. I mean, it's done. When it, when it was moving lower back here, that was the week ended uh, August the uh, 1st. As soon as we saw it close above that high, that was your next buy signal inside of the uh, Dow. So I have to say, being in that second leg up, take a look at the monthly chart. The longer-term charts are saying all that's going on on a daily basis is just a lot of back and forth, you know, just a little, a little bit of... Uh, Balsamic vinegar drizzle. Don't even know what that means, but it came to mind. Hey, let's go take a look at the S&P 500 out here. If we take a look at the S&P 500 and its monthly chart, hey, what you and I both know is what the S&P wants to do. Is it wants to get to 2350. Why 2350? Because that's the level of the consolidation, a 16-year, 800-point consolidation that it broke out of. Are we seeing any kind of reversal signals on a monthly basis inside of the Dow? We absolutely are not. This, week, this month's candle, no reversal signal there uh, whatsoever. Uh, you can forget about that little rising price channel close and above that. That's no big deal out there. The trend was to the upside. Sometimes it acts as a ceiling, and sometimes it doesn't. That sounds like the Almond Joy commercial, doesn't it? Sometimes you sound like a nut, which maybe I do, and sometimes I don't.
which maybe is the uh, time period right now. So what does the S&P want to do? She wants to go to 2350. And as we come out of this on that seasonal cycle, hey, is the unseasonal cycle over? No, you still got to deal with the month of October. But let's face it, the month of September has been a washout for the uh, bears to the uh, downside. And that's taking a look at the S&P 500. That's taking a look at it on a monthly basis. That is what its projection is. That's where it wants to go. Hey, if you take a look at the uh, you know monthly basis out here, it's harder to form these little red boxes that I've got. Those are the Stevie Rhodes trade. Uh, that's my Rhodes Momentum trading indicator. Remember, you know, when we take a look at the markets, we really got to break it down into four quadrants out here. Volume is only one of those. We've got to be able to measure momentum. We've got to measure a number of different uh, things out here. As we take a look at the S&P 500, its measurement is uh, strong on a monthly basis. It is strong like bull out here. Another red signal. Of course, those light blue skies say that it wants higher price. And let's take a look at the monthly chart here for the S&P 500. I will take a look at a weekly chart. Let's just go see, is there anything else going on in a weekly chart? Weekly chart, just simply in a cautionary uh, stance out here. But it, too, is... Uh I got more room to uh, to go to the upside. Yeah, we do have a price relative strength diversion pattern that uh, confirmed well confirmed last week a little bear sash candle. Uh, you would need a lower close this week to uh, suggest that pattern could be in play and that we could see a little bit more downside action. And I'm not uh, suggesting that we don't see a bit of downside action. I expect the next couple of days could also be. Um, volatile out here and i hope that it is for all the folks that are trading the uh, because what a great week to have you don't want to have some volatility out there in order to really be able to put on some cool trades using the nadex uh, platform out here but uh, once this week is over the market should be uh, ready to uh, move higher out there so if that's in fact what you see don't uh, don't let that uh, surprise you because uh in my opinion it's been really clear as far as what the market wants to uh, do. If we take, hey, let's take a look at the NDX 100. We don't take a look at this monthly chart too often, but we ought to. Why ought we? Well, take a look at the number 4049.98. We're trading 4048.75 right now. Uh, 4049.98, this is a monthly chart. That happens to be the all-time high weekly swing point out here. So if, in fact, we see a close inside that this month, that'll be the second month in a row that we've seen a close inside of a swing point. When you close inside of a swing point, volume or not, it doesn't matter. There's a pretty good chance you want to go test it. In this case here, it would be testing the highs out here. So the number to watch today, 4049.98. You can talk about window dressing. You can talk about salad dressing out there. Here's the deal. You close inside a swing point like that, a pretty good chance of what you're going to do is you're going to move to the upside out here. A pretty good chance on the monthly chart that uh, you may only be in the second wave on the way up. And that says inside the NDX 100, you close back inside that uh, swing point uh, this month here, your second time. Pretty good chance of what you're going to see is move up into the 4816 level out there. As I say, folks, all I'm doing is just calling the charts as I see them, just using the standard tools that we would use for any time frame or anything. When we get back, let's go take a look at the Russell 2000. Let's look at the New York Stock Exchange. And then we want to go take a look at Maxwell, MXWL, for one of our dinners out there, Mike in the Tiger Stands. This is Steve Rhodes. This is TFN. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. 
with the launch of Tiger TV. TFNN has brought our programming to the next level. With Tiger TV, you can gain access to each host's charts and computer screens as they host their daily stock program. Whether it's Tom O'Brien, John Logan, Steve Rhodes, Basil Chapman, David White, Larry Pesavento, Andy Hecht, Think or Swim, or Carol Martin, you can catch all of our technicians hosting their programs live and archived on Tiger TV for your viewing pleasure 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. If you haven't checked out Tiger TV, then visit TFNN.com and see what you're missing. Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technamental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now's the perfect time to get a full month long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you are under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, in a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den, absolutely free, for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Steve, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Traditionally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow is off uh, 15 points right now, trading out at 17.055. S&P is down two. Let's go check in on Maxwell Technology before we go look at the Russell Monthly and the New York Stock Exchange. Let's do this for our man Mike in the uh, Tiger's Den. Uh, Maxwell Technology, we're going to start off by looking at the uh, monthly chart out here. You know, we took a look at the uh, NDX 100. And I gave you the number of the uh, swing point there. And, and Maxwell really doing the same thing here. And Maxwell's got a, a swing point down. Let me see that low, 492, 490. I'm going to use the uh, swing point here, uh, Mike, from March of 2013, the high of which is 492. Your preference would be to see, I'm sorry, the high of which is 492. What am I talking about? The high is 923. You'd prefer to see it close above that this month out here. If it doesn't, uh, and you've got volume down there as well at that low. Now, it was tested the uh, following month there in April, and it just made just a slightly lower low out here. But closing inside that, you know, suggests that maybe the old market profile low in the 738, that could be an area of uh, support out here. Uh, now, what it's doing, it is testing that older market profile high on a weekly basis in the 888 range. So you'd have to say you'd like to see it close above that. I say that, folks, because Mike is long or looking to get long. 
uh, the uh, position out here. So you'd like to see that hold as a uh, support uh, level. Now, this did have one heck of a nice breakout. That was the uh, month here of March 1st, 2014. 26 million shares to the upside. Had some additional follow through. Did about uh, 21 million shares during the month of uh, April out there. So that was uh, pretty nice inside here. And price is coming back to the breakout. But the actual breakout is really, I would have to say, right around the, uh, the monthly chart, around $7.04. But let's go see what the weekly breakout level would be and go see where that volume came in here's where that volume came in during the week of march 3rd out here what i always like to look at as the uh, breakout is a candle or two prior to it and i like to look for the lowest volume that takes me really back to about uh this uh, session right here uh weekend of february 7th or february uh, 10th out there um so it says that that low is 806 and uh you know 806 and you're trading at 889 that ought to be you know some decent support uh, for you right now again trading at 889 you don't like the mere fact that it's trading right below its market profile low on the daily basis out here we're not seeing any kind of bullish action it does have a uh, it's trying to also maybe test this swing point from august 4th 2014 3.4 million shares to the downside you came into it last week with light volume 2.6 and 2.5 Five, and this week you're at 1.5. So you're at least coming into that swing point. That low is 830. So that ought to hold for you. You're at 889 out there. But coming back into a uh, breakout, that's what the weekly chart is showing on the uh, daily chart out here. And so, folks, if you were looking to get long Maxwell Technology, you know, now is the time when you'd like to be looking in here. The daily chart says 856 is its market profile support level, and you would certainly like to see that area uh, hold out here um, and then what you'd like to see is a sign of strength well this actually had a little bit of sign of a strength a sign of strength yesterday moved higher but ran into resistance at that uh, market profile high out here so i would have to say if you were looking to get into maxwell technologies you'd like to actually see it you'd actually like to buy it maybe at a higher price and just prove to itself buy it at a higher price or a lower price versus where it's at right now um, higher price because you'd like to see it break through a resistance zone out here. And there's a fairly decent resistance zone. There's a supply line now inside of Maxwell, and that's at the 1079 level. And that's where it had gapped down with some volume, 2.1 million shares on August 1st. So I hope that that helps you out. Or if that was too general, uh, please let me know, and I'll be more specific or look for something more specific. But at this stage, I would say inside of Maxwell, it's trading down into what should be some pretty decent support. But it looks like you could, uh, if you break 856, you've got a little bit lower price ahead of you out there. That was ticker symbol MXWL. Uh, let's go now take a look at the uh, Russell 2000 as well as the New York Stock Exchange. Let's look at the monthly chart here. Now, what we know about the New York Stock, I'm sorry, the uh, Russell 2000 is it wants to get to 1350. And I don't know if this is just the setup here or not, but it's been traveling in a sideways consolidation that if it breaks the top of that consolidation, will get you up to the 1350 or not. Of course, if it breaks the low, well, then we're going to have to wait. And the low that it would have to break would have to get down below the uh, low here from the trading session into May. That low is out at the 11, 1082 mark out there. I suspect that that is going to hold. And that is the Russell 2000. But it's the weak link out here. There's no question. It's the weak link. We got a price relative strength divergent pattern, but it just has never been able to be confirmed out here. This is nothing more than just a consolidation that's going on inside the Russell. And until it breaks a consolidation, uh, you know, I got, I mean, that's the pattern. That's the pattern you really have to wait for. So you can play inside the box. It's a nice box out there, which means sell the top and buy the bottom, or just take the momentum move. We did not get to the New York Stock Exchange, so apparently we've saved that when we get back from this next breakout here. Dow's off 18, S&P down 2, composite off 11, Russell down 7 points. We'll be right back. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading, and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels, as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. 
By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. If you're an active trader looking for that extra edge when it comes to trading and investments, then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.MOBI in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach out levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow is uh, flat. S&P is flat. Uh, composites off six. Russell's off uh, six as well out here. So let's go back and take a look at the uh, New York uh, Stock Exchange. Oh, we're going to take a look at the New York Stock Exchange as well as the NASDAQ composite. We might as well just simply round out the uh, monthly charts out here. Now, if we take a look at the New York Stock Exchange out here, you do have a little dark cloud cover candle that has formed as we speak. But until the New York Stock Exchange, so long as the New York Stock Exchange, we probably can use this as much of a uh, bellwether as anything else else out here. So long as the NYSE stays above 10,387.17, that's its 11-year 6,200-point consolidation out there. That says its measured move is in the 16,500 level. We, we take things one step at a time out here, but there's no price relative strength divergent pattern. 
That is typical of a uh, market high out here, and that's why I say that any uh, retracement, any pullback in the market is relatively tempered. And the number to be watching inside the New York Stock Exchange would be that 10,387 uh, mark out there. As long as it doesn't trade below that, its next target is 12,185 on the uh, way up out here. So we don't see any real reversal signals whatsoever inside the New York Stock Exchange. Only it's a monthly time frame uh, chart out here. Let me see. Let me take a look at the uh, weekly chart. Let's put up the uh, weekly chart, see what this uh, looks like out here. Yeah, just a market that's consolidating sideways. That's all. No big no big deal um, as we speak uh, at this moment here on the uh, weekly chart for the NYSE. Let's finish this off by taking a look at the NASDAQ uh, composite out here. Let's go see what it is doing by taking a look at its monthly chart. Its monthly chart has uh, no... A uh, reversal signal as we speak right now that could take place uh, as the as the day ends if we saw one kind of one one large huge sell off so no reversal pattern uh, it is making higher highs it's doing it with less relative strength but it's trading inside the March 2009 uh, swing point it wants to go finish off that pattern that pattern says that what it wants to do is it wants to get up to the high the high of which is oops let me grab this here the high of which is uh, 40 51 32 52 five one. 513252. It's 1 to 1 1.6188 to B equals CD, the upside. That takes you to 4923.65. Uh, so there's, there's no signal here that I see inside of the uh, NASDAQ composite on a monthly basis that is confirming any kind of a, a move lower. So it is totally blown the month of uh, September. Hey. You know, it could happen in October. Uh, all that I can tell you is what we what, what, what we currently are looking at and what its uh, signals uh, show. And so remember, from a trend standpoint, the long-term trend is going to uh, supersede the shorter-term trend. So the monthly does have a lot of impact, especially when you are coming to the end of the month out here, especially when you've got really one month to go inside that unfavorable seasonal cycle out here. And so I say the bears have been able to do diddly squat to the uh, downside out here in a month when they really should have been able to have uh, taken some uh, action out there. So that's taking a look at the uh, longer term time frames. Now let's go take a look at uh, some uh Let's go take a look at some individual stocks out here. Let's take a look at Apple. Uh, it's up a dollar thirteen. It's got fourteen million shares traded today. Let's go see what this is uh, trading into. So it's got its own consolidation pattern as uh, well out here. Uh, the bottom of which, really, we'll just use the market profile low of ninety seven sixty six. The market profile high, which is trading above right now today, is at one hundred point seven zero. So uh, Apple's giving you the sign that it wants to at least go test the highs out here. Of course, with the waiting inside of uh, Apple out there. That bodes well for the NDX. We took a look at that NDX 100 monthly chart. This could be the second month in a row when it trades above or closes inside its swing point high out there. That's bullish, not bearish. Uh, volume out here inside of uh, Apple so far this morning, 14 million shares. Of course, it did move down with 100 million shares, but any close above the low from September 24th, which is 101.20, and you're at 101 and a quarter right now, that would repair that window, that would close that window, and that would suggest that uh, Apple would at least go and test the uh, uh, September, no, September 2nd high out there at the uh, 103.74 mark. So, uh, you know, today the important level to watch today is going to be whether or not Apple can repair the window, and that would be a close above 101.20 out there. So watch that uh, as far as the markets. Let's take a look at Exxon Mobil, right? you got the energy sector. That's been moving uh, lower out here. Of course, we've seen volume uh, dissipate inside of the XLE. Uh, if we take a look at the XLE, also had that key reversal session. Exxon Mobil did not have a key reversal session. Um, there really is no uh, bullish signal. That's really not that's so close to being a potential hammer candle from yesterday. Um, I don't think it. it uh, I don't think that it is out here. Uh, if we take a look at Exxon Mobil, let me pull this back further. See what this might be trading into. So it's really trading into a lot, an area of support out here that uh, took place between March of 2014, just March of 2014. So it's trading into that area. Maybe let's take a look at a weekly chart, get a better feel for what Exxon might be doing on a weekly basis. I don't see any completed A to B equal CD pattern or anything out here. Let's take a look at any kind of uh, trend line um, inside of, uh, let's do that here. So we look at a trend line come all the way back into June of 2010. And, uh, you know, 
it's really trading right now down into that trend line as we speak. And what I'm using here, I'm just kind of used as the trend line touch points, the lows back in October of 2013. So let's take a look at volume out here. Volume, uh, what's this moving into? Big bullish reversal signal that took place the month of, uh, yeah, no, the week of. The week of February 10th, 2014. So it's really just testing that. That had volume of 64 million shares. And last week you were down with, yeah, 55 million shares. You were down testing a reversal swing point low with light volume out there. So uh, yeah, the move uh, to the downside inside ExxonMobil uh, could be over as uh, well as it pulls back into a swing point with light volume. Uh, let's look at uh, let's look at some of the uh, gold equities. So you got gold trading down about five bucks right now. Silver's off thirty three cents. Let's go take a look at a couple of gold equities. Let's start off with Rand Gold. G O L D is the uh, ticker symbol. It's uh, basically flat for the uh, day, trading out at sixty eight thirteen. Uh, the uh, move here, let's see, yesterday had volume of 4.2 million shares. That was accelerating just slightly. Uh, let's put this, this is the weekly time frame, actually. That was uh, not yesterday's volume. My apology there. We'll go take a look at uh Let's go take a look at the daily chart. Let me switch over to the daily time frame here as we take a look at RAN Gold, G-O-L-D, being the ticker symbol. So yesterday's volume on the way down, light volume. Really sideways move, only 500,000 shares yesterday. So far this morning, uh, 260,000 shares out here. Let's see, what's Rand Gold uh, trading into? So many gaps out here because of uh, maybe some currency conversions that I uh, can't really tell you. Um, short of a reversal signal, which we have not seen inside of Rand Gold, that could trade all the way back to the uh, January 9th trading session. That's down about the $59 level out there. That's what's going on inside that ticker symbol. Let's take a look at uh, Gold Corp out here. GG is the uh, ticker symbol. She's trading uh, out at uh, 2308, down 29 cents. Has got volume so far today of 1.6 million shares. Yesterday's uh, volume out here inside uh, was, uh, let's see here, 3.2 million shares. Very light volume yesterday. Again, volume so far this morning uh, picking up. It is below the 1 to 1 1.6. When 8, A to B equals CD. Looks like uh, this is now testing its swing point low from all the way back here on June the 3rd. That had 6.2 million shares. It's tested it. It may be rejecting it. The top of that swing point is uh, $23. Even, Stephen, you're trading at 2306 So there you've got a 100% uh, move, a move, a test of a swing point. Doing it with lighter volume, but we'll see where it closes. We've got a request to go take a look at FN. V, uh, FNV from Danny in Atlanta. That is Franco Nevada Corp out here. If we take a look at Franco Nevada, it's a stronger stock than uh, Gold Corp was. Just simply taking a look at retracements. Uh, if we take a look at Franco Nevada, it had a key reversal session out here, a uh, trading session of uh, September 25th. Key reversal requires three things. One, for the prior session's high and low to be exceeded. We saw that take place on September 25th. You also need the market to be in extended condition. It most certainly was as all the gold stocks gold and silver were and then you need just simply a change of direction you need a uh, tick in the opposite direction you need to see a green candle in that case and we saw that but you saw a bullish engulfing candle so franco nevada is trying to uh, hammer out without a hammer candle it's trying to uh, form a bullish uh, bottom out here and so long as it does not close below that low from september 25th 47.83, that becomes your bottoming area. If it takes out the 47.83 level, then what you probably can expect, let's put this on the weekly time frame. Let's see what the weekly time frame a candle session might uh, give us out here. It says that you can pull all the way back down to the, now what it's doing on a weekly basis as well is the swing point is May 26, it looks like. That had 2 million shares. Uh, and you've done 466,000 this week. Last week was a test with 3.5 million. So 3.5 was testing 2 million. That was coming back with a bit too much volume on the uh, weekly basis out here. But uh, the daily chart is the one right now that has given you a reversal signal. So I say if that daily holds, you're in pretty good shape. If the daily fails, then what you'd probably look at inside Franco, Nevada, is move down to about the 45.28 to 47.86 uh, type range. You're at 48.87 right now.
And that was for Danny in Atlanta. Let's do one more gold stock out here. Let's go take a look at Barrick Gold ABX trading with uh, 4.5 million shares so far today, down 23 cents out here. Uh, this is still on the weekly time frame. So let's go see what it's doing on a weekly time frame. Its swing point, which is trading into, has volume from July 1st, 2013 of 102 million shares. That's weekly. You traded into it last week with light volume, 53 million shares. But unfortunately, in in the case of Barrick, you closed inside that swing point. You broke a hammer candle. Um, it's trading below even the swing point here from December 2nd. So uh, Barrick Gold could easily make its way down and test the July 1st low at $13.43. The whole key to all of these equities is really going to come from one thing. It's going to come from Goldilocks. It's going to come from the king, the uh, U.S. dollar index. It's we, what we have to see in order for gold and silver to really turn. Now, the equities have been holding up pretty well. Okay, so that's got to it's got to make you say you've got to be paying attention to it because, you know, U.S. dollar index has been very strong to the upside. The euro bit very strong to the downside. They are both overbought and oversold and they're due for just a significant uh, muy grande uh, retracement. And uh, and once we see that. Um, I don't care where these uh, gold stocks are trading into. You're going to see one heck of a uh, move, uh, and it's going to be a move you're going to want to be in on. And uh, it's going to be it's going to be probably very large the first uh, day or so out there. Um, but uh, that that is what my expectation. However, we're not going to see that until we see the U.S. dollar index begin to fail, uh, and in turn, then we'll see some type of reversal candle inside of uh, gold and or silver. We don't have that in place as we speak right now. Gold has done pretty well in the face of the U.S. dollar index, which right now looks like it's been giving up some of its gains out here. So let's go back and take a look at the euro. Now this is a little bit of a delayed chart out here, but let's take a look at the euro, and I'm going to put this on a 30-minute time frame out here, and let's go take a look at a, a trend line out here. I think we were looking at this yesterday, were we not? Well, that's a 30-minute chart out here. Um, we, the answer could be no, we were not, <laughs> but let's, let's take a look at it anyways. Uh, so what do we got on the 30-minute uh, basis in order for uh, the euro to give us any kind of a feel for a, a trend bank, a trend break? You know, it's probably that line right there. Yesterday, it was trying to break that level and get above its market profile high. So it's got a ways to go before we see that. Uh, but if I look at the 30-minute chart, try to come back here and blow it up, we'll leave that diagonal line across my screen. That's, that's really going to be the line of demarcation. That's going to be the line that the euro would need to uh, get above. So we can see that it's off of its bottoms, but it was so oversold, the euro, just using the 14-period relative strength indicator out here, uh, that it's just uh, it's doing what it's supposed to do, which is to work off an oversold condition. So uh, if we take a look at retracements off of the most recent swing point low on a 30-minute basis, uh, that would uh, took place at 2.30 in the morning this morning, down to the low so far that we've seen today at 7 a.m. You're above the point, uh, 382 retracement level, so the euro ought to bounce to the uh, 0.618 level that ought to go ahead and uh, have the U.S. dollar index uh, pull back. Maybe uh, gold and silver uh, uh, will come off of the uh, lows as uh, well out here. That's what's going on inside of the euro as we speak out here. Quick peek in. Uh, so you got the Dow's up 35. Uh, the S&P is up 4. Composite's up 9. Uh, Russell's uh, off uh, 2 points. So no surprise here. It's just, you know, was the bottom put in yesterday? Let's go back and take a look at those uh, charts. In case you didn't get the uh, first hour out here, let me go back to these uh, trading charts. Let's go back, take a look at the 300, the 120 minute. And the NQ is really going to be the key, in my opinion. And if we take a look at the NQ right now, the NQ, boy, way off of its uh, low from, uh, it's a little push down here. This is a... This is the 300-minute uh, time frame chart, and uh, you know if we take a look at it, the last time that the NQ made a, a nice bottom out here, it did it with a seventh wave pattern to the downside. That's your trough G pattern. Well, that's exactly what took place yesterday uh, during the uh, 10 o'clock hour, during uh, the 10 a.m. Uh, session out there. Maybe it was as we went into 10 o'clock. And uh, in this case here yesterday, nice big bullish reversal signal. Bull sash candle had some additional follow through. Right now, if you're watching us on Tiger TV, what Stevie's looking at. That is a descending price channel out here on the 300-minute chart. That's the one that I'm watching for it to uh, break. What the what it did as we came on the air at 9 o'clock, it had made the 0.618 retracement, sold off a bit. Now it's going to go attack that descending price channel. And if we see a break above that, folks, the bottom was very likely yesterday. 
and all this little agitation that I expected for the uh, next couple of days out here, maybe that's not going to take us. This is Steve Rhodes. This is Steve Man. Does the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange, and unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. Or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and the power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before, for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Catch Basil Chapman as he uses his Chapman Wave methodology to call the markets. The Tiger Technician's Hour, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 27, S&P up uh, three and a half, composite up uh, seven. Uh, let's go check in on the uh, New York Stock Exchange. First uh, things first, let's go see what we got here. Net declining issues, 129, 124, not that big of a uh, deal out here. Again, the bottom being formed in the marketplace, in my opinion. If we take a look at 
Today's candle session, much like yesterday, has got the opportunity here to form a hammer candle. We already have hammers in the Dow Jones and the Dow Jones transports out there. A real important signal, both for the bulls and the bears out there, because you close below a hammer candle. If you're long, you're wrong out there. Uh, and there is, the, when you take a look at the fall inside the Dow, the, the only fall is back to its swing point. There's been no base that was built coming off the August 8th low out there. Uh, but nonetheless, let's uh, read the message of the market here. Uh, this is the New York Stock Exchange. Uh, the bears have control of it, but they are losing control. And really, they've had control for such a long time. They did what they were supposed to do, their work was really to go ahead, as I pull this back here further, their work, their job, was to uh, go ahead and uh, push price back to the uh, bottom of its rising price channel out here. This is the one that was really coming off of the uh, lows here from August 24th. So they have successfully done that, and they move to the downside. It should be over. The uh, low that we saw inside the price oscillator, similar to other lows that we've seen out here inside of the uh, New York Stock Exchange as it has formed bottoms. Uh, so, uh, so that work here uh, to the uh, downside uh, should be over. Now, uh, we're a far cry from that advancing issues, being able to move that price oscillator above the zero line. But boy, folks, if we get that, that will be the message for sure that the uh, bulls are in uh, control. Uh, today's candle will be important to watch. Is it necessary to form a hammer candle? No. But, uh, you know, it is something that we want to pay attention to. Let me uh, take a look at the, about the Dow. So the Dow yesterday formed a hammer candle. If you don't know what that looks like, you have to have enough of a downtrend established. And inside the Dow, uh, we did. Let me try to, oh, let me do that. Yeah, not really. But this is the hammer candle that was formed. There was enough of a uh, trend established to the downside off of the high from September 19th. So that's a hammer candle. That low from yesterday is very important. That's at 16,934 out here. Now, if you watch this on Tiger TV, the price oscillator is right at the zero mark. Uh, negative point. No, it just went positive. Point zero two. Must know that I'm talking to it. Um, and so if it gets above, and you can see that the summation index is now turned up as well. So up and down, uh, just right now, just down below it. But if we see the uh, oscillator get above the uh, zero line after yesterday's hammer candle, uh, pretty impressive uh, for sure. And I say breaking back above 17, 150, 156 would be even more impressive out there um, inside of the uh, Dow. So we'll see if it can get above that uh, price oscillator out there. As I say, I know, I know without a doubt, so many divergent patterns that exist inside the market. Uh, marketplace out there. Of course, those divergent patterns have actually worked because we have seen a pullback. We have seen a retracement inside of the market. The New York Stock Exchange, I think, is a beautiful chart because it shows us getting back to the bottom of that uh, price channel line out there. And so the uh, the bears have had their chance, and now we're going to see what the bulls can do with the uh, market out here. So we got signals yesterday, starting to get some other signals here uh, today. And uh, we'll see how this all uh, plays out. If I take a look at the uh, SOX index, let me do that. Let's take a look at the SOX index on a uh, daily basis out here. Uh, no, no hammer candle today, but the SOX actually could form a hand or hammer candle. If it's, it's trade at 641.29, it probably needs to get to about the 640. 644 level or could be higher you could see a green bodied candle out there so uh, folks uh get your surfboards ready get ready to ride the wave can't wait to hear the story from basil about his son ringing the bell or part of the group that was ringing the bell this morning at the uh, nasdaq i believe it was at the uh, nasdaq out there and uh, so stay tuned get those surfboards ready let's go on a ride with uh, basil it is terrific tuesday that means we got the option hour then daryl martin uh, david white the tom o'brien show from three to five and our man andy heck he'll go ahead and take us home from five to six hey folks uh thanks so much for joining us have a great day look forward to seeing you uh, yeah, take care Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers 
subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This is TFNN.